What's going on, friends? Sanford is back once again. Now, Anycubic reached out to me several months ago to talk about their Anycubic Cobra S1 combo. Kind of sounds like quite an interesting machine, but due to various delays, I actually haven't managed to get the machines in my hands up until the end of December. So, well, here I am now to tell you exactly what I think about it. Now, if you cast your minds back to this past November at Formnext, you might recall that I've already made a video on the S1 combo. That video, of course, was more of a first look at the product and an overview of what we could be expecting on its general release. And I have to say, though, Anycubic seems to have taken more of a shotgun approach when it's come to shipping these machines out. So let's dive in and see if this printer was worth the wait and how it holds up in terms of quality. Let's get straight on into this one. You are watching a master at work. This video today is proudly sponsored by PCBWay, your go-to high-quality PCB manufacturing, 3D printing, and CNC machining company. Whether you're creating your next big project or experimenting with cutting-edge materials, PCBWay has the tools and expertise to make it happen. Check out PCBWay.com today and bring your ideas to life with precision and passion. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this channel and creators just like you. So first of all, the start of 2025 will certainly be dominated by machines that look just like this one. The S1C, the Prusa Core 1, Eligus Centuri Carbon, Flashforge's AD5X, and most likely the Creality K2 and K2 Pro. And we might even get to see Frozen's Argo, if that ever makes it across the line. Of course, though, we've already seen the K2 Plus, the QD Tech Plus 4, and various other machines that I have no doubt will have people butt hurt about. And why would they be butt hurt? Well, because some of these machines are based on the Bamboo Lab Core XY range of printers. Now, of course, this is nothing new. We've seen this for years. Copies of the Prusa i3, then the Ender 3, and then you'll find that companies would just simply add features and upgrades inside of their next release. Glass beds, PEI, and the days, of course, before auto bed leveling, probes, and then finally Raspberry Pis introducing Clipper. Oh, how exciting. So this is just a case of history repeating itself. Sure, but of course, those iterations bring focus on certain manufacturers who are simply just trying to be the best. Now, Anycubic here are no fools. The Cobra Free Bed Slinger teased heated multi-material unit, which is called the Ace Pro. Now, this crosses the entire range of their new 3D printers. Limited, of course, to eight colors, but it does actively dry the filament, which could be looked upon as a cost saver. And this is a fairly unique feature because nobody else has it yet. Other iterations or features include 48 decibel printing, which makes this quite quiet for a 3D printer. However, in my testing, I have noticed that the Ace Pro is a little noisy during feeding of the filament. Single handed hot end change out on this machine, and the machine's hot end also heats up to a maximum of 320 degrees. And as I've been saying in my more recent videos, I believe that the material support will become a major factor on seeing the upper levels on temperature, which is going to be important. But I also do know that there are printers coming in 2025 that might even reach the ranges of around about 450 degrees on their hot ends. Now, this machine's print volume is 250 by 250 by 250, and it's geared to all users, newcomers, pros, and print farms. And this machine is certainly going to be pitched that way. Online and land only printing is featured, but my best guess here is this machine is running Clipper, but they're calling it Cobra OS, which I have no doubt will upset seasoned veterans of the 3D printing space. 
So I got past the unboxing stage and I got past the test prints and then I went to install the new OS onto my Mac. However, at the time of filming, there wasn't a Mac version. It's only a Windows version of the Anycubic slicer for this particular machine. So I reached back out to Anycubic and they've given me a beta version. And well, I have to say it's it's pretty good. Equally, I was impressed that they gave credit to Prusa, Bamboo and Super Slicer in the about page. But in short here, we are using Orca Slicer and it feels and looks great. But I do wonder, do we really need another self-branded slicer at all? But perhaps on reflection, it's about the new users coming into a new experience and well, perhaps teamed with this and Maker Online, this ends up being a pretty good experience. That teamed with Lev IQ 3.0 for auto bed leveling, an onboard camera, and a pretty decent print speed of between 300 and 600 millimeters per second. If you are looking or have ordered one of these, well, you may have backed a winner. And on that topic, if you are interested in purchasing that printer and this video has helped you, there is an affiliate link shown in the description below. And of course, every little helps. So what is there to consider? Well, the price is for one, and the combo is coming in at £499 in old money, which is based on what Anycubic are currently calling the Founders Discount, with a general recommended retail price of £749, which, to be honest with you, I doubt you will ever see it at that price. And that's $549 to our US audience. The Bamboo P1S, on the other hand, is currently discounted to £699, so the price point is pretty important along with an impressive brand history, which isn't always shared across manufacturers. And by that, of course, I mean we have started with a slightly shaky start with this particular delay. However, to be honest with the unboxing experience and the first couple of prints we've got, it's been a really positive experience, regardless of the fact that the slicer didn't work initially on my Mac. But getting past that, we've done that very quickly. Anycubic have been super responsive. So to be honest with you, I haven't got a huge amount to complain about. In fact, anything to complain about. So let's look at two things now. Let's look at the print quality and also the project. Inside of the box, the printer did also come with a project. It's a wireless speaker, which is basically a small version of the S1C. Okay, so this is the gift or the kit that comes inside of the box. You might get a different one, of course. Now, what you should be able to do is scan the QR code. But what I found is when I've done that, it, uh, it gives you a dead link, I believe. Let's see if this loads makeronline.com and I'm okay with that and no it doesn't display anything so what I did is I reached out to Anycubic and uh, they've sent me the file and um, hopefully by the time this goes live you should be able to download that straight from Maker Online so let's just open the box to see what's inside so I'm guessing what's this I'm guessing this is a what is that I'm not sure what that is it's a coil of some sort. Then we have a speaker. Let's take that out. Of course, I don't actually have any instructions, so um, this is going to be interesting. Test of my skills of making stuff, of course. Then we've got a cable, which is a USB-C to a USB-A. Then we've got a, a USB-C to a uh, phono jack. And then right in the bottom here, Oh, look at this. Okay, this is cool. So we've got a circuit board here. And the circuit board has a USB-C and a small SD card slot. Uh, looks like we've got some LEDs and things on there. A couple of points to plug in. A couple of capacitors on there as well. A bunch of screws and some sticky double-sided tape things. Maybe it's... I uh, don't know what that is, but uh, we will no doubt find out what that is in a bit. And then inside this little black packet here, we have, if we can get into it, oh God, here we go. In here we have a battery. This is a um, 3.7 volt, 1000 milliamp little plug-in jobby. Okay, so we worked it out. The speaker plugs into the smaller of the two jacks and the battery just plugs into here. I've had to put some charge into this, but I've just connected to Bluetooth, which is just called AC. And if I press this button, we should hear some music. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so the good news is that this works. We just gotta wait for the model to finish off and put this together.
So a slight time shift now. We've moved the machine just up here. We've been printing with it for enough time, I think, now to really give you an assessment of exactly what I think. Of course, I could be printing in eight colors, but I don't have the necessary equipment to join all that together at this point in time. And I don't know if I ever will, to be quite honest with you. But let's get into what I think about the printer, the print quality, and some of the issues that I've come across. The models shown here are either stock models that were on the USB stick or models that I sliced myself which were downloaded from popular STL websites or paid websites like STL Flix. Starting with the AnyCubic speaker which went together with ease and it's a really fun project but in my opinion it didn't utilize the RGB lighting elements on the board in the best way possible and it only reflects the light upwards and doesn't really give the best results. Having said that you could of course print the file in white or clear filament to get a better result or look to remix the files to make the model look more impressive. Overall though, it works as intended, and it's a pretty cool file, and who knows, maybe I'll rip it apart and install it into something else in the future. If you are interested, of course, in building one of these yourself, you can go over to the anycubic.com website, where the PC board and speaker retails for around about 15 bucks. However, it's currently out of stock, so your choice might only be to buy one of these printers now, and make sure you use the affiliate link below. Moving on though, and some of the other files have been rather long-winded. The Pokemon print suggested that it would take a mere hour and a half to complete. With the printers, stops, purges and colour changes, the model took many, many more hours. And it's a shame as overall the slicing number isn't realistic to the slicing software. This could be down, of course, to the slicer being in beta. Of course, that teemed with a huge amount of purged waste. Well, to be honest, the whole thing really just gets under my skin. Now, personally, I prefer not to waste filament, and really the only machine that makes that cost efficient is, well, the Prusa XL, which, of course, is versus this budget-friendly machine is unfortunately not. You'll find similar on every other poop shoot color-changing machine out there, and you'll probably end up wasting more filament than you actually print. The models that I've printed here have been of a decent level, and without a doubt, with some extra tuning, you can get some very impressive prints out of the S1C. So what are my final thoughts on this machine? Healthy competition drives growth sparks innovation and fosters self-improvement. However, in the world of 3D printing, personal bias or rigid camps favoring one approach over another can tarnish the availability to deliver a fair, balanced and level-headed view. That being said, where and how you come into the world of 3D printing will have no doubt give you the highs and lows within this hobby. What I can say for sure is that Anycubic have surprised me with the print quality of the S1C and have managed to add contributions into a solid base. I get the feeling also that I'll be saying this next line a lot across 2025. This is the best 3D printer that X company has ever made. But this is true. The S1C certainly does appear to be solid. How it got there, of course, does matter. But it shouldn't matter as much as you being able to add that competition into the market. Anycubic have been the first to add heat into their ACE system, whether it's CFS, AMS, MMU, and did what basically Creality were unable to do with their CFS system. However, I expect to see this option being added to many new units that we see mid to late months of 2025. The 3D printing space right now is such a movable target. Printers are coming out pretty much daily right now. There's been huge amounts of hype around lots and lots of different machines. But the important thing I guess to remember is is the machine that you're selecting the right one for you? Is it going to be able to do the things that you want it to do for the foreseeable future? And are you going to get bent out of sorts if something else comes out tomorrow, which maybe fits it better? So in closing, I'd say that the S1C is a good alternative if your budget doesn't permit a market leading printer. There is such a wide choice out there now. I like this printer a lot though. I like the plastic doors, the hot end setup, the ACE system heating, and the fact that Anycubic took a punt and just went for a Core XY over a bed slinger. But it's not a Bamboo Lab printer. But this is also not priced that way. Anycubic want this to be feature rich, budget friendly, and with some end user dedication and maybe a few software updates, I doubt that it would fail to impress the majority. With all that said and done though, it's the Cobra 3 Max combo, which actually really has piqued my interest. I like the idea of a really large bed slinger, 420, 420 by 500, printing up to eight colors. That does seem a little bit more interesting than a smaller Core XY printer, certainly right now. Let me know what you think about this printer in the comments. Has it piqued your interest? Is it something that perhaps you're going to look to purchase in the future? Or is this bent out of sorts in the past? Thanks, friends, for watching. We will see you next time. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work.